Welcome to the Florida Department of Transportation's District 5 online public hearing for the five-year tentative work program covering July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2022. Hi, I'm Steve Olson, District 5's Public Information Manager. This online work program public hearing is being accessed at www.d5wpph.com and it'll be available for you to comment and give us feedback 24 hours a day beginning at 8 a.m. on December 5th and extending to midnight on December 9th, 2016. To submit your comments online, simply click the comment button, type your comments in the space provided, and then click send. Or you may print the comment form located in the Documents and Publications tab, write your comments, and mail the form to the address provided. You may also call or speak one-on-one -on -one with a department representative to discuss the work program. For more information on joining the public involvement process, click on the Public Hearing tab on the website. Your comments are essential toward the development of the tentative five-year work program, and your input will be reviewed and used to refine the program as appropriate. All comments must be submitted by December 19, 2016 to be included in the public hearing process. The district work program contains projects scheduled in various phases of production, which include project development and environment, also known as a PDNE, preliminary engineering, right-of-way acquisition, and construction, as well as grants, which go toward funding infrastructure. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Contact information is provided on the bottom of each web page for persons who require special accommodations under the Americans with Disabilities Act or persons who require translation services. These services are free of charge. The five-year work program includes a list of projects that provides clear direction on where to build, when to build, and how to fund projects. FDOT's fiscal year differs from the calendar year. Our fiscal year begins every July 1st and ends the following year on June 30th. The development of this work program involves extensive coordination with local governments, including metropolitan and transportation planning organizations, as well as cities and counties. In urbanized areas, metropolitan and transportation planning organizations develop transportation plans and prioritize transportation needs. For more information on the development of the five-year work program process, please be sure to watch the informational videos located on the home page of the work program public hearing website. The work program covers the next five years for the nine counties in District 5, which include Brevard, Flagler, Lake, Marion, Orange, Osceola, Seminole, Sumter, and Volusia counties. You'll find a variety of improvements in each county, including airports, seaports, bicycle and pedestrian improvements, capacity, intelligent transportation systems, also known as ITS, traffic operations, railroad, resurfacing, and transit projects. Just select a project category from the menu or click on a specific county on the map to view more information. Following the online public hearing, the tentative five-year work programs from each of the districts all across the state are submitted to the department's secretary for review. Following this evaluation, a statewide public hearing will be held on March 6, 2017 in Tallahassee at the Burns Building, 605 Suwannee Street, Tallahassee, Florida. Once these steps have occurred and all adjustments have been made, the statewide tentative work program is then reviewed and approved by the governor and then becomes the adopted five-year work program, effective July 1st. Within this online public hearing, you will see updates on our district's major projects such as Interstate 4, SunRail, Wakaiba Parkway, and SunTrail, as well as project updates from Florida's Turnpike Enterprise. And now let's take a look at a few of the major projects in the district. Hello, my name is Norian Downs. I am the District 5 DOT Secretary. Thank you so much for trying this new method that we're trying to reach as many people as possible. So we appreciate you watching and we hope you learn a lot from us and you can also go to the website and get more information. But uh, we really work hard for you. It's, it's your money that we, we serve you to try to get the best projects out the door and give you as many options as possible. So we hope that you will enjoy this new process and it should save you some time. And again, you can give us a call, you can go to the website, anything you need so that we can meet your needs in transportation. 
I'm going to be talking to you about three very important projects in Central Florida. Wakaiva Parkway, which is the beltway around Central Florida, the I-4 project that everybody knows about, that um, everybody's driven it, can't get to Disney without getting on I-4, I believe, um, and the Beltway will help you if you don't want to get on I-4 and you want to take the Beltway if that's closer to you. And also the new project, SunRail, and uh, that's moving along and we're in its second phase. So I'll be very pleased to talk to you about those three projects. Wakaiva Parkway project, that's going excellent. We have many projects between um, the Central Florida Expressway Authority, they are doing the Orange County pieces, and DOT is doing the Lake and Seminole pieces. We have many sections underway. One is actually built where we're collecting tolls. We're buying right away from any others, and the big interchange at I-4 is about to take place in the next six months to a year, and everything will be done and running by 2021. Wakaiva Parkway has been discussed for over 20 to 25 years. It's very environmentally challenged. They've got the seven jewels, there's septic tank issues, there's a lot of environmental natural areas that we really want to make sure that stays whole. Right in the middle of the project, they have bat caves, yes, bat caves, bat condos as we like to call them. And then we also have this deer runoff ramp, so if they jump over the fence on one side and they're running across the road, there's a ramp that goes up and they can jump over the fence. So that's pretty cool too. We try all kinds of new techniques and uh, those are two brand new interesting ones that should save our wonderful Floridian environment. I-4, that is actually going fantastic. Five more years left. This is a design, build, operate, maintain, and finance plan. This is the type of projects where we, where we would not have enough money to build the whole thing. It would take over 25 years to save up. So this type of projects, you can get the project built earlier than you ever could by just saving up the money. And then the tolls will pay for themselves. So this project is gonna be adding two new lanes in each direction, which will be a managed lane, which will guarantee you time to get into Orlando when you need to and back again. By having managed lanes and you wanna choose the general use lanes, your increase in speed just by having managed lane has been proven to be up to 25 miles an hour faster by having them manage lanes. So it's a win-win for everybody to make that choice. The project's going well. The safety aspects are phenomenal on this project. They've worked very, very hard. In fact, you cannot even enter the corridor without taking a four-hour course on safety. And if you feel it's unsafe, you can shut down the project while the engineers, they make sure everything is safe. So I've been very, very impressed with that. For such a huge project, it's been amazing. And it's moving right along. I would suggest if people only drive on the top to also drive underneath occasionally and see all the work that's going on underneath. And that too will be ready by 2021. SunRail's been in the mix for 14 years. We're very pleased to say we're on phase two south, which is another 18 miles going all the way down to Point Siena in Osceola County. Still need to get some funding from the federal government to build to DeLand and we're also looking at going over to the airport. We're also working on getting our ridership numbers up there. A lot of transit-oriented development is being built as we speak, so stay tuned to that. Um, the economic development is, uh, was predicted to be a billion dollars, and it's actually gonna be three billion dollars by the time we're done with the 61 miles. The interesting thing with these three big projects is SunRail will go over to the locals in 2021, Wakaiva Parkway will be done by 2021, and I-4 will be done by 2021. So 2021 is a great year. So thank you for watching us, and we really appreciate you uh, listening to this new um, technique that we're using to get information out. Hello, I'm Frank O'Day, Director of Transportation Development for Florida Department of Transportation, District 5. Many Central Floridians are familiar with our I-4 Ultimate Project, which is currently under construction. At the Florida Department of Transportation, we've been busy planning and designing an expansion of our managed express lanes throughout Central Florida in a series of projects we've identified as I-4 Beyond the Ultimate. I-4 Beyond the Ultimate extends both south and north of the I-4 Ultimate project. To the south, we have three segments which run from US 27 in Polk County through Osceola and into Orange County, ending at Kirkman Road. On the north side, we begin at Longwood, extending through Seminole County into Volusia County at State Road 472. 
The Department of Transportation has been able to make some significant funding advancements on several of these Beyond the Ultimate segments. Beyond the Ultimate Segment 2 runs from State Road 528, the Beach Line Expressway, up to Kirkman Road. This project will connect express lanes which are currently being built by Florida's Turnpike Enterprise to the express lanes being built on the Ultimate project. We've identified $42 million in right-of-way for this from 2017 through 2022. And in fiscal year 2020, we've identified $330.5 million for construction. This will allow the department to enter into a design-build contract for Segment 2 in July of 2019. For Segment 1 Beyond the Ultimate, which runs from the Polk Osceola County line up to State Road 528, the department has identified $309.2 million for right-of-way procurement in fiscal years 2018 through 2022. At this point, the department has yet to identify the roughly $1.6 billion needed for construction of this segment. A little farther out in Segment 3, the Department has identified $40.2 million in fiscal years 2022 through 2025 for right-of-way, and this extends from Longwood up to U.S. 1792 Interchange at the Volusia County line. There are also no funds identified right now for construction of Segment 3. We are excited about this good news for I-4 Beyond the Ultimate and hope to continue to work with our central office and our private funding partners to maybe have even better news for funding on I-4 Beyond the Ultimate next year. Hi, my name is Heather Garcia and I serve as District 5's Sun Trail Program Coordinator. As part of this work program public hearing, I'm here to talk to you about the Sun Trail Program and the two priority networks, both of which include segments within District 5. By now, many of you have heard of the Florida Shared Use Non-Motorized Trail Program commonly known as Sun Trail. This program was passed by Florida legislators in 2014. The program ultimately provides $25 million annually for the development of statewide paved multi-use trail networks. The first priority network for Sun Trail program is the Coast to Coast Trail. This trail is approximately 250 miles long and begins at the Gulf of Mexico in Pinellas County and ends in the Atlantic Ocean in Brevard County. Of the coast to coast 250 miles, approximately 144 miles are in District 5. 61 miles of the trail has been completed, with the remaining 84 miles programmed within the District 5 work program. There are three coast to coast projects proposed for Sun Trail funding. The first project is part of the East Central Regional Rail Trail in Volusia County, which begins at Guy's Road, where the trail currently ends, and continues to Gobbler's Lodge Road in Osteen. This project is 3.5 miles in length and will be funded for construction as design build in fiscal year 2018 for approximately $5 million. The second project is part of the Space Coast Trail in Titusville. This portion will connect the existing pedestrian bridge over State Road 406 to the Max Brewer Bridge. This portion of trail is 8 tenths of a mile and will be funded for design in fiscal year 2018 in the amount of $800,000. The next project is in Orange County and is referred to as the Clarcona Ocoee Connector Trail. This trail is 4.3 miles long and begins at Hiawassee Road and ends at US 441 just north of State Road 414. Right of way will be funded in fiscal year 2019 in the amount of $2.1 million. Design is fully funded in current year, fiscal year 2017. Now let's cover the second priority network, the St. John's River to Sea Loop. This priority trail is approximately 270 miles long and runs through five counties, Volusia, Flagler, and Brevard in District 5, as well as Putnam and St. John counties in DOT's District 2. Approximately 200 of these miles are located in District 5, with 70 miles completed and the other 130 miles currently programmed or under construction. On the east side of the St. John's River to Sea Loop, there are four projects programmed for fiscal year 2018, totaling $1.25 million. These projects are located along Beach Street in Daytona Beach. Moving to the western side of the St. John's River to Sea Loop, we have a segment that will connect a portion of the Spring to Spring Trail from High Banks Road north to the end of the existing trail at Detroit Terrace in DeBerry. Construction of this segment is programmed for approximately $2.2 million in fiscal year 2018. The next project is within the town of Pearson. This 1.1 mile project will follow along the eastern side of US 17 from Washington Avenue to Palmetto Avenue and is currently in design. 
Construction is programmed in the amount of $1 million in fiscal year 2018. This trail is anticipated to provide access to the new Pearson Elementary School, which is scheduled to open in the fall of 2018. The next project is the gap between New Smyrna Beach and South Daytona. This 12.5 mile trail runs along US-1 from Canal Street to Bevel Road and is programmed for design in fiscal year 2019 for $3.5 million. Another project is Volusia County Southern segment of the Spring to Spring Trail. This 3.1 mile section runs from US 1792 to Rob Sullivan Park on High Banks Road in DeBerry. The project is programmed for construction in fiscal year 2019 for approximately $2.2 million. And in Flagler Beach, we have a segment that will connect a 2.89 mile gap between the existing trails along A1A. This trail is programmed for design in fiscal year 2019 for $2.5 million. Lastly, there is a 1.3 mile section of the Spring to Spring Trail in De Leon Springs. This section from Grand Avenue to US 17 is programmed for construction in the amount of $4.5 million in fiscal year 2020. The goal is to fill in the gaps on these trails, and as you can see, we're well on our way. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carol Scott, and I'm pleased to share with you the tentative five-year work program for Florida's Turnpike Enterprise in District 5. The funding for these projects will occur between fiscal year 2018 and fiscal year 2022. I'm going to briefly highlight some of the major projects that we have in the tentative five-year work program. In Orange County, the Turnpike is building a brand new interchange at the Turnpike Main Line and Sand Lake Road. The construction of this project is scheduled for 2021 and the total cost of the project is $51 million. Also in Orange County, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise will let a design build project for direct connect ramps between Interstate 4 and the Turnpike Main Line. This $69 million project will be scheduled to let in fiscal year 2018. And in Orange and Lake Counties, the Turnpike will widen its main line from four to eight lanes by adding two lanes of express lanes in each direction. This $102 million project will begin at State Route 50 Claremont Interchange and travel northward to the newly constructed Mineola Interchange. Construction for this project is scheduled to be let in 2021. And the Turnpike will also be widening its main line in Osceola County. This $124 million project will begin in fiscal year 2019 and will widen the turnpike from four to eight lanes by adding two express lanes in each direction from US 192-441 to the Osceola Parkway. And we will also be resurfacing nearly 80 miles of turnpike facilities in Orange, Osceola, Seminole, Lake, and Brevard counties. The construction investment for these projects is $169 million, and these projects are scheduled to be let in fiscal years 2018, 2019, and 2020. Finally, Florida's Turnpike Enterprise will kick off a project development and environment study for a brand new toll facility in eastern Orange County. This facility will begin at the eastern terminus of State Route 408 at Woodbury Road and travel eastward to the State Route 520. Again, I am pleased to share with you the tentative five-year work program for Florida's Turnpike Enterprise in District 5. The Turnpike is committed to meeting the transportation needs of Central Florida. Thank you. The district's five-year work program affects you in some way, and that's why it's vital that you're involved in the development process. Your opinion matters. To learn more, please continue to browse the work program website, and if you wish to provide comments or ask questions, you still have an opportunity to do so. All comments must be received or postmarked by 5 p.m. December 19th, 2016. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us here at the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5.